Hey, this is the third in a series of recordings on screening designs. And prior to this video, you should have watched the first two videos on screening designs, read the screening designs part one notes, and read chapter two of the uh, Hoos and Jones Optimal Experimental Design uh, book. So in this particular video, we're going to actually focus on a case study from Chapter 2 of Hoos and Jones. And this is a biomanufacturing process where they're using E. coli to produce a particular biomolecule of interest to them. And in this particular case, it's a lipopeptide, which is used as a um, preservative in some types of food and their lipopeptide yields have not been high enough. In other words, currently they're getting 25 milligrams per deciliter. They need at least 45. So the current process, as they've engineered it, is not sufficient. So we're going to try to use a designed experiment to see if there's some way they could improve production. And in fact, we'll see that there is. So in this experiment, the scientists and or chemical engineers have picked six factors they'd like to look at. And this is at the extraction phase of the process, meaning initially they have to um, have a fermenting step where they produce, uh, they ferment these E. coli, they stress them with certain conditions, and then these E. coli are genetically modified to pump out this uh, lipopeptide. And after the fermenting step, they then have to go through a process of lysing the cells, breaking them open, and then a process of extraction. So this experiment focuses on the extraction. Okay. So they have six factors they want to look at. Okay. Uh, four different solvents, methanol, ethanol, propanol, and butanol. They can be at zero milliliters or 10 milliliters. And then they have a fifth factor, which is pH of the extraction solution. And then finally, a sixth factor, which is extraction time, which can be either one hour or two hours. The current process runs at 10 milliliters methanol, pH of 7 and 2 hours. And as I said, the results have not been satisfactory. Okay. So the authors of the book are working with the engineers to design an experiment. And the number of total runs the engineers are willing to do is 12. That's it. So at this point, they could do a resolution 3, 2 to the 6th minus 3, fractional factorial with eight runs. But remember, resolution three means that main effects are aliased with two-way interactions. And two-way interactions are quite likely. Therefore, this design is not a good choice. On the other hand, a Plackett-Berman design with six factors could be run in as little as 12 trials. And this is basically the design they used, a 12-run plaque at Berman. And the one they actually used is slightly different than a classic plaque at Berman, probably um, created in jump custom design, although they do not say so in the textbook. Also, keep in mind that in creating this experiment, they need to be cognizant of trials which may not even function. In this particular case, there has to be at least one solvent present in order for the extraction to occur. And therefore, when they create the design, they cannot afford to have any trials where all four solvents are set to zero. Okay, And you'll get to see this later on. In, creating designs in jump custom design. But there actually is, beneath the factor table, 
um, an option to create constraints, one of them is to actually disallow combinations that you do not want. So here I've put in that any combination where all four solvents are zero is to be disallowed. So jump will not allow that combination. Okay. So here is the design created by jump. And later uh, in the discussion of screening designs, I'll show how to create these designs in jump. I won't do it at the moment. But this is the design that was actually selected. And this is essentially a 12-run Plackett Berman. Remember, there are five additional columns which are not being used. But those columns are partially aliased with potential two-way interactions. So we can't use them for error. Okay, And the file um, extraction Plackett Berman or PB jump contains the data. We'll look at it in a moment. And notice that in these, um, the alias matrix, this is the classic uh, aliasing structure for a 12 run Plackett Berman. Okay. And here is a main effects only uh, design. Remember, Plackett Bermans are really main effects only plans. Basically, it's potluck in terms of trying to estimate a two way interaction. You have to be somewhat lucky to figure out which it might be. And later on, not in this section, we're going to spend some time talking about how to analyze these. Um, Plackett Berman designs and other screening designs because it is a bit of an issue. So what I'm going to do at this point is bring over the design. Okay, and I'll show you quickly. First, if you want to see the aliasing structure, okay, or you wanted to create a Plackett Berman, I'll just show you quickly. If you went to screening design or custom design, either one. In fact, I'll go ahead and use custom design. Okay. And I have six factors, all continuous. Okay. Continue. Okay. Notice disallow combinations. You'd select this. I've already shown you in the notes, so I'm not going to do it. But I would put in here that I will not allow any runs where all of the solvents, those are your first four variables, are zero. Okay. I'm not going to put any two-way interactions in because I have no idea which ones they would be. And I certainly couldn't estimate all of them. There are so many. And then you have this box, alias terms. In here, you put in the terms that you would like to see in an alias matrix. So I've put in all the two-way interactions. So jump will create an alias matrix showing the aliasing between the six main effects and all of the potential two-way interactions. There are 15 of them. Okay. There were no replicate runs in the original design, and it was a 12-run design. This is essentially a Plackett Berman. So I create the design. Okay. So when I create it, you have design evaluation. Okay. And one of these options is the alias matrix. So as I said, you can come in here and see that the aliasing is one third um, for each of the main effects if they are partially aliased with a two-way interaction not in the model. So how would we analyze this design? Again, we'll get into this uh, quite a bit later on. But where we would actually could start, okay, go to Fit Model. I'm going to put in okay, the six main effects. And I'll add yield. So we run the experiment. And it indicates that some main effects may be significant, but of course, we don't have any idea about two-way interactions. 
that could be significant. And at this point, there's very little we can do. This is just the starting point, And we could end up removing some of these factors. Uh, I am hesitant to do it because of the aliasing, but the smallest effects by far are butanol and propanol. So if you wanted to, I'm going to show you later, this is not optimal, but I could remove them for illustration. Okay. But if they're involved in interactions, what I just did could be very suboptimal. Then using the profiler, click on the profiler menu, get the desirability functions, and as we've shown, maximize desirability. So basically what it's saying, if we run at 10, uh, I've forgotten what the, I think this is milligrams per liter, ethanol and methanol, pH of 6, so they want a lower pH, and a time of 2 hours, it's estimating on average you'll get 48 milligrams per liter. However, uh, you have a 95% confidence interval that says the true yield could be anywhere from 53 to 44. So potentially we could fall under or just under the target of 45 milligrams per liter. But at this point, at least the uh, analysis indicates there is definite potential that we can easily exceed the cutoff for them, the minimum for economic feasibility of 45.